All right, good day, team. Uh, so what we're going to do today, we are going to work on our see it, name it, do it model training. So this is now our session or part two. We did cover part one on how to utilize our scope and sequence and then our coaching guide. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the see it, name it, do it model and how we can utilize it. Okay, so uh, step is second one is let's go ahead and get started. The goal for this session is to be able to practice the three major components of our spring weight coaching model and it is supported execution, which is our observation, our guided adjustments, which is our feedback, and then real time coaching. This is going to be crucial for us in our success is when we are able to coach our teachers in real time as we know that that is very important so that way the 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 feedback is fresh and then what we're seeing is also fresh okay so we have one key belief that we have is that the real purpose of observation and feedback is not to evaluate a teacher but to develop them that is one of the key beliefs that we have in order for us to grow okay so before we get started uh, we are going to watch a video uh, but before we watch a video, uh, it's only a minute and 10 seconds, what the two things that we need to keep an eye on is what does Cheryl Porter do to help the young singer improve? Okay, that's one of the questions that we ask. And then the second one is what makes her coaching effective? Okay, so those are the two questions that we are going to consider as we are watching the video. Now that we're a now that we're able to see uh, the video of that one, what do you think of it? Okay. What does Cheryl Porter do to help her youngster improve? What makes her coaching effective? Those are the two questions that you need to answer for yourself and go ahead and write a note on it. So again, another key belief that we have is that the fastest way to grow or develop a skill is to see it, which is to be able to observe and to name it and create a plan on what we just observed and how we are going to be effectively able to coach and then to do it which is to perfect the practice and we repeat this until we've mastered it over and over again it has to be constant correct practice makes perfect not constant practice but constant correct practice makes perfect and part of a, one of the things that we can do when we are a, when we are coaching is that the smaller and more precise the action steps, the quicker the growth. It makes sense perfectly when we are able to uh, chunk our uh, action steps and we're able to quickly uh, impl to implement it. The most effective coaches narrow their focus to the highest leverage action step. Why do we want to do this? It's simple, right? You want to get the, the, the biggest bang for your buck and you want it to be able to be a smaller uh, increment so that way you can focus on it and measure it. Okay. One of the criteria is for the right action steps. It has to be of highest leverage. It has to be measurable. What you can see and do, it names what to do and how to do it. That's a key uh that will be one of the key uh, components of our coaching system 
is that you have to be able to name what it is that you want them to do and also specify how you want them to do it or how you suggest to do it. And of course, the last one is it has to be bite-sized, meaning it has to be in chunks and it has to be measurable within a short time frame. What it says here, if you can't make it change in a week, if you can make the change in a week, the action step isn't small enough. So you have to, again, do a bite-sized chunk on it. So those are the three things. Highest leverage, it has to be measurable and bite-sized. Narrow your focus by converting your goals to action steps. Highest leverage, measurable, what we discussed, and bite-sized. Okay. One of the things also we have to ensure is that when you are creating your action steps, you have to be able to write it down. Write down the action step builds the roadmap for effective feedback. Now, why is this? Again, you're able to write it so you can see it, you can visualize the process. And metacognitively, you're actually able, as you're writing down your process, you're able to see uh, the events in your mind and you're able to put your to pen and they were able to see it. When we are not clear where we're headed, our teachers won't be either. That's a big uh, preface to what we have to do. And think about this. If you are not clear yourself where you want to go, how can your teachers be also? And then when we are picking an action step, think of a waterfall. What is a waterfall? We are going to find the highest source of where the, uh, the where it's coming from. So you have to start from the top and stop when you hit the first major growth area. So in other words, find the biggest or the root or where you think you are going to start the action step where it will solve, it will cascade down. Uh, where if you feel that, hey, if I start here, it would solve that and then some. That's the best way to think of what a waterfall is. Okay. So now let's go and do our, our case study, first case study we have. Okay, your task is to name the gap, you know, find the difference between what you are seeing or what you are reading and what you should be expecting. And you name the clearest action step that you can think of on how you would be able to suggest or coach this teacher. So here it is. Case study number one. As you walk into the middle school class, the students have just finished reading two passages and they're getting ready to discuss them in small groups. The students seem to be pretty attentive as the teacher starts giving the instructions. Okay, class, now you're going to discuss the articles of which you agree, uh, you agree with. You should have a lot to talk about based on the articles. If you need any help, you can consider the resources that you might have that could help you. Remember, make sure you, everyone gets a chance to talk, okay? You can begin. The groups begin talking and you've noticed that none of the students, none of the groups are discussing whether or not they agree with the reading passages. The teacher floats around and she also notices that students are getting off task. You hear her say the following to each group. You should be talking about two, the two passages. Do you agree or disagree with each of them? Then you should use evidence from the passages. She also says comments like, John, I need you to get back on task. Based on this information, what action steps would you give this teacher? <clears throat> On this particular case study, we, are, we found that this is in the phase two with the management trajectory is where we are going to start our name it piece. And the specific action step is giving crisp and what to do directions. The three, character, the three things that we can specifically give as an action steps are give word by word what to do in directions for each turn and talk. Ask one to two checks for understanding that you'll ask the class prior to starting the turn and talk. And scan after each direction and narrate at least two students complying. Those are the three things that you can uh, do as specific action steps of the how to. Because now we have the what to do, which is the crisp what to do directions. So now you're able to give those and if you do these in our system we should be able to get a, a bigger leverage on the action steps that we have. Alright, here's a case study number two. Name the gap. Again, clear action step. 
The teacher has worked hard with you to set up his opening routines. He created a routine of greeting students at the door and set the expectations for students to enter quietly. He had a do now, a five minute written task already placed on students' desks so they, should, they could start work immediately and set a timer for five minutes to create urgency about completing, completing it. While the routine worked successfully at the beginning of the year, as you observed him today, you noticed that the routine has deteriorated. As each student enters the room, the teacher greets them. But as they move towards their desk, some students dawdle or wander to other parts of the classroom before pulling out their chairs. Others talk amongst themselves or even lightly scuffle with each other. One or two binders fall to the floor amid giggles. Hardly anyone has begun work on the start of class assignment. The teacher moves to the front of the class, stands still and calls out class. Remember that everyone should be heading to their own seats, not someone else's. There is little change. We should be working silently on our do nows. He tries again a moment later to no avail. Two minutes later, when nearly everyone is seated but only half of the class is completing their do-nows, the teacher tells the class they have collectively lost half a point already in the system of classroom consequences they use. Some of the shuffling dies down then, but some murmurs still remain. Based on this information, what action steps would you give this teacher? On this particular problem, or this particular scenario, we are still going to be in phase two of the management trajectory is where we're going to start. It, the, the action step would be cl whole class reset. We implement and plan whole class reset for class of entry. The specific how to on how you do the whole class reset would have to be use a formal register, issue clear on what to do directions. Every third student greeted or scanned or narrate one to two kids doing it. Every third student greeted as a scan is when they come in to ensure that they just go ahead and you understand, they understand that you're watching them. Uh, so the what to do directions have to be very specific for the students. Think of the waterfall as a cumulative idea to integrate former action steps into the current one to keep mastery. Now for rigor trajectory introduction to aggressive monitoring, we need to train our eyes during observation to focus on the learning, not just the management. As we are looking at uh, the aggressive monitoring, we also it's very important that we also focus on the instruction. On this particular video we're about to watch, look at what does Julia do to maximize the effectiveness of students' independence practice. What did she have to prepare ahead of time to be able to do this? So for this uh, video, uh, if we were to look at this, what our recommendation would be for action steps would be phase two, and this time is rigor. She didn't have to deal with any management concerns, but this time it's rigor. She had monitoring aggressively, uh, create monitoring pathway. If you notice that she is walking around, uh, she has a pen in hand to mark up student work. She also is giving quick check star circle. Uh, she's queuing students to revise answers and she's collecting data. That's one of the big uh, important things that we saw in there. Okay. So now we are 
uh, finished with this part.